Alright guys, so what I have in store for you today is take you through a day of field herping in southeastern Missouri. Uh, what you're seeing here is a picture of a broadband water snake in a backwater or flooded area. Um, so the particular areas of southwestern Missouri I like to visit have a lot of swampy areas. And in these swampy areas, um, you can find a lot of, of course, reptiles and amphibians. And here's some chorus frogs. Of course, wherever there's water, there's a lot of frogs. I uh, found a lot of species of frogs. Didn't bother to take pictures of most of them, but uh, th this is one I did take a picture of because I don't see a lot of those uh, where I'm from. And this is an idea of what the main waterfowl management areas look like. So they're, they're pretty decent sized bodies of water. Um, and in these waters themselves, of course, there are reptiles, and you know, particularly turtles. But uh, what I really like about these areas is it creates uh, overflow areas uh, where you can find all sorts of interesting animals. But in, this, in these main bodies of water themselves, of course, there are a lot of turtles. Here you see dead trees, logs, some grasses, tons of areas for turtles to get out and bask. And the most common one I found in this particular uh, pile of logs was the southern painted turtle, uh, which you can see here has a nice stripe down his back. Uh, there were some map turtles and other turtles too. Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures of all of them. Uh, here's a mud turtle. Uh, I didn't look for these guys in the water because uh, I didn't have a lot of time, but I did find some of these guys just crossing the road. And uh, here's a picture of one of the ones I, I found along the roadside. And give him a little assist across the road. There's not a lot of traffic, so I don't think he was any problem. But he he got he got a he got a little helping hand. Um, now, as I was saying, those flooded areas I'd like to spend quite a bit of time in um, for salamanders because two reasons. One, um, there's not a lot of fish back there because those flooded areas will dry up in the summer. And so the fish don't live as well back there. So the salamanders are able to breed in those areas when there's much less competition uh, from fishes and, and turtles and things. Uh, the other thing is there's, there's still some trees and some forested areas, so it stays cool enough during the summer uh, that these these salamanders can live back there, and you know they don't overheat. They get underneath logs and get down in the mud in the, in the summer. It can stay, you know, relatively cool. Uh, the marbled salamander is probably the most common that I've seen uh, in those flooded areas. Um, find there's just quite a lot of them there. Uh, Smallmouth salamander also does well in the flooded areas. Um, find these guys under logs and things too in those same areas. Um, seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, here is actually a spotted salamander with no spots and in some parts of southeastern Missouri these are pretty common I find them in those same overflow areas uh, anywhere where there's basically fishless bodies of water fishless ponds anything like that they'll uh, they'll breed in um, more commonly I see the spotted spotted salamander uh, that looks like this guy and um, those are fairly easy to come by particularly in the breeding season um, during the summer, like I said, I found these at, a little bit outside of the breeding season. Some of them will just sort of hang around near the surface underneath the logs. So you can still find them. During the breeding season, you can find uh, quite a lot of them. Um, owls. Um, here's a barred owl. Uh, I find these to be my diurnal than uh, a lot of the other owls. Uh, like the great horned owls and the screech owls. I do see those like maybe sitting on a nest or poking their head out of a, a hole or, or something like that, but um, the barred owls, I typically see them uh, pretty active during the day, really, and, and, and hooting, and you know, sometimes they'll respond if I, if I throw out a call, uh, even during the daytime. Here's a broad-banded water snake. Now, this snake, um, it exists in Missouri, but only in the southern part, like St. Louis, like where, I'm, uh, where I live for a number of years. They didn't really occur up there, so this is one of those species that kind of meets its uh, northernmost range, I believe, in, in Missouri. And that's one of the reasons uh, I like going down to southeast Missouri every once in a while. Is you'll find species that sort of... Well, you'll, well, two reasons why. One, you'll find species that meet the northern part of the range there. Two, you'll find some swampy areas that butt up against uh, bluffs. And if you're familiar with Snake Road in, in southern Missouri, or southern Illinois, it's the same concept of why that area is popular. You have some swamps, and then you have a bluff area... Uh, adjacent to the swamp uh, so that it's quite easy during uh, the move to or from uh, the brumation area to find fairly large numbers of snakes making that crossing. So you're typically going to go um, 
just as things are cooling down in the fall or you're going to go as things are beginning to heat up in the spring and you can find lots and lots of snakes uh, during that time period. Uh, and that's where I found this snake. He was just out on the crawl, uh, probably heading up to somewhere to, uh, to hibernate for the winter. Um, also, some of these diamondback water snakes uh, could be found. Um, not particularly colorful on the top side, although you can see his little diamond pattern there. His skin's a, a little bit muddy there, so kind of hard to see. But uh, here's the ventral surface, which is actually quite colorful. Um, so, not the best picture, but uh, that's the one I have. Now, I was mentioning before that they come out of these swampy areas and head up into these bluffs. Here's an example of, of one of the hibernaculums. Uh, this is just a bluff with some crevices in it. allows them to get in. Uh, they can stay above freezing uh, during the winter. And in that particular bluff I just showed you, the reason I was investigating that is I was finding some of these cottonmouth snakes. Uh, which are another big draw uh, for people like like I said again around like St. Louis or further up north they we don't have these and so you could drive a couple hours down into southeastern Missouri and you get to find these uh, cottonmouth snakes uh, which are pretty interesting uh, a lot of folklore about them most people know all about them but, you know they'll show you the white of their mouth and uh, you know I don't find these to be particularly aggressive snakes uh, if you're gonna go climbing around in those bluffs uh, during the time when they're coming to and from them, they, they, you should know that they can be found there in, in relatively large numbers. So you want to be careful where you're putting your hand. You don't end up with a little neonate hanging off your finger or something like that that you didn't see. And, you know, I would probably wear a pair of boots, too, just to be on the safe side. Um, I don't imagine you're going to get uh, bitten. But because you're climbing around, you know, if you're not paying attention, it's potentially possible you may not be able to see the snake. Now, once you see the snake, they're no longer a threat because you just don't get within the striking range of them. So you should be able to go down there and enjoy the snakes, get some nice photos, and not not have any problems. Uh, you know, just just remember, there's a lot of leaves, there's crevices, there's a tendency to want to put your hand to brace yourself. And maybe you're putting your hand on a ledge, something like that. You want to be a little bit careful with those things. And you know, if you have children, of course, you want to uh, uh, make sure to brief them on you know just some basic safety in that area. Um, if you do that, you're, you're, you're more than likely not going to have any problems. Like I said, uh, lots of people go down there every year and enjoy it. And so I hope you enjoy the snakes, and I hope I've encouraged you to maybe take your own uh, field herping trip and see what you can find.